Anibal Bugnini in the 1960s got rid of the traditional offertory in which the priest uses sacrificial language to present the oblations of bread and wine before God, before the consecration. And now we have the blessed be God forever, Jewish prayers, which are not traditional, it's made up by a Freemason. And now we have added to that two college mascots getting their groove on right here. What? When they designed the Novus Ordo, they, they were going back to the early church. Y'all know that, right? It was all about going back to the early church. You know, that's why we have the altar facing. This is all a lie. This is a mockery of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. We believe that Jesus, our Lord and Savior, second person of the Trinity, eternal word of the Father, Son of God, Son of Man, that during the holy sacrifice... He's present. He becomes present on the altar. The sacrifice of Jesus on Golgotha is represented to us truly. And this is a mockery. And it's a mockery that's been going on long enough. What they don't sense after 60 years of ex liturgical experimentation, what they don't sense is God is holy. God is righteous. God is pure and clean. We are sinners. We are struggling to become saints. It's a war. It's a battle. It's a carrying of the cross. The Catholic liturgy was the place of grace, instruction, and formation. And it's where the person, where the peasant, where the sinner encountered the majesty of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. That's the Mass. Hear me carefully. This might shock some of you. The Mass was not instituted primarily in order to distribute communion to us, although that is very important. The highest task, the highest goal, the teleology of the Mass is to bring glory to God by uniting humans through the humanity of Jesus Christ hypostatically united to the divine nature of Christ as a divine person, the second person of the Trinity, and bringing that adoration, we, we have nothing. Christ has everything, we have nothing, but allowing us to participate in the redemptive act, the redemptive sacrifice of the cross offered by Jesus Christ as high priest on behalf of man, to God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit. That's the primary task, goal, and teleology of the Eucharistic sacrifice instituted by Jesus Christ at the Last Supper, made real and offered on Good Friday, and then for the past 2,000 years, confected, transubstantiated on the altars of every Catholic church. That's the Mass. And if that's what it is, there is never any room for this. It's contrary to the action and the nature and the dignity of that Trinitarian action of God the Son, incarnate of the Virgin Mary, but God the Son offering himself, his body and his blood as a propitiatory sacrifice to the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, and we get to participate in that. That's why the church requires you to be at Mass every Sunday and Holy Obli Day of Obligation and doesn't require you to receive communion every week, only once a year. Why? Because the highest purpose and end of the Mass is this adoration and this sacrifice of God the Son received by God the Father. And the priest stands there in humility, offering his voice and his body in persona Christi, in the person of Christ, so that that reality can be made present to you and me out in the nave. That's the reality. And that's why you hear me say, I'm not trying to be a meanie. That's why you hear me say, please find a traditional Latin Mass so that you can experience that. You can experience the mystery and the dignity and the glory of that sacrificial act it's not about performance. 
you know, like being cute. It's not about face pain and balloon cactus, clowns, driftwood. It's about Jesus Christ, Lord of Lord, King of Kings, Alpha and Omega. If you just think he's like this groovy hippie walking the earth and hugging people, that's not it. If you really want a wake-up call of who Jesus is and what he says and what he does over history and upon the earth and at the end times, read the book of Revelation. Amen. What?